Hi there, folks. Certainly glad you found us. And if you're finding us for the first time, my name is Darren Sutton, and this is the only show devoted to amateur baseball. This is Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rawlings. And this show is going to be a little bit different than our usual show. Let's call it a show of inspiration. We'll talk to some talented youth athletes, and they'll take us through their journey. A high school young man who's impacting his community and impacting baseball on the national scene. Some major league alumni who give back to the youth game. And we're going to learn a little bit more about how they're giving back to Perfect Game as well. And a Perfect Game Hall of Famer. That's right. We're going to hear from a, a very talented slugger who came through the Perfect Game platforms. Now is part of the very first class of the Perfect Game Hall of Fame. But let's start with a couple of guys that gave back. They wanted to learn more about what's going on with the future of the game. One, a big league dad, Flash Gordon. His two sons have longtime major league experience and, of course, Flash nearly a 1,000 games as a pitcher in the big leagues. And then Charles Johnson, the brand-new member of the Perfect Game family who joined me as an outstanding color analyst at the 14U Select Festival. The two of them got together. They went to Florida to the great complex, the Boomba Complex, just outside of Orlando, Florida, and they wanted to find out what's going on with this game. We put them to work, and here's what they shared with us. And this brings back, like you said, so much because you see these kids and you see how well they play. They make their plays. They do the things right, the little things to progress the game. Yes. They know how to hit and run. They're well coached. And of course, for me, man, seeing this with perfect game and an opportunity to experience this every day, uh, couldn't be better, man. I've always taught, and I was a big believer in, when that ball is coming in and you're getting ready to block it, just exhale. And now your body softens up. Now your body relax, and now so when the ball hits you, you're not tense. You're nice and relaxed, and now the ball wants to fall down right in front of you. What would you do well as a catcher, and what things you think you need to work on? Blocking is always a thing that gets harder and harder as you play at higher and higher levels. Yes, yes. It's the hard pitching. It's hard. You have to really be committed it to it. It is. And the one thing about blocking is that you have to really have a knack for anticipation. So when you're blocking, you have to really understand the pitcher and understand at, at his release point. And those are the little things I had to learn as a catcher, whereas as soon as you can recognize that ball is going to be in the dirt, it's going to better you as a catcher. When nobody was on base, that's where you get your practice at. So when nobody's on base, I told myself, I'm going to block a baseball. And that's where I got my work in. So now, when that guy was on the mound pitching, in real time, I'm blocking balls. So even if I miss it, no big deal. When I teach kids, I want to teach them the ideas of a four-seam fastball grip. That's having that fastball, baseball in your hand, two seams, the top two fingers on top of the ball, the thumb underneath, and want your hand directly behind the baseball. So when that ball decides to come out of your hand, it actually comes out with this rotation. Show me that four-seam fastball. Oh, man. So how much grip you have to that? Reach out. Hold that up for me. Can I take it out of your hand? If I take it out of hand, you're fairly loose with it. Now, this is my four-seam fastball. I'll take it out of my hand. I like using my wrist a little bit more because it gave me more command. I wanted a true life straight fastball. And when I wanted to sink it, I wanted a four-seam fastball with some dive, some sink. Because everything works together, right? Yes. From this shoulder to that hand, everything got to go together. Now, give me your four-seam fastball again. Right, now, I want to give you a small tip. You see how that ball feels right there? Yes. You got that pressure point there? Make sure with your thumb, you own the ball. You yeah. keep that thumb where sometimes if you take your arm up in pro ball and a good pitching coach, if he sees your arm comes to this position and that fingertip flies off, you're losing command. And you're probably losing a little bit of velocity as well. Okay. So keep your hand on the baseball. I've yeah. always really appreciate a good catcher behind the plate. Yeah. I always appreciate yeah. the guys that could actually help me get through one inning. Uh -huh. And people don't realize the importance yeah. of, for a pitcher, uh -huh. you giving me one sign that can get me out of one inning. It's really cool, right? It's really cool what's going on with these two talented athletes and the fun that they had with the, with the future of the game. Flash, of course, a big part of Perfect Games Foundation, raising a lot of funds to give back to those who otherwise couldn't play baseball or PG's battle against pediatric cancer right over my shoulder. Proud to have it here, the Perfect Game Cares Foundation. When we come back, a slugger who jumped on the PG platform about a generation ago and took it for all it was worth. He now is going to be one of the first members of Perfect Games Hall of Fame. My conversation with one of my favorites and many of yours, Prince Fielder. Glad to have you with us. This is Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rawlings.
There's a new king in Queens. Francisco Lindor is headed to New York. New York is great. It's a place where you can be whatever you want to be. Every day I challenge myself to break down barriers. Seeing others live their passion, it makes me push harder in all that I'm doing. Man, that dude Lindor is fearless. I'm always trying to push myself further as an athlete. My style is limitless, just like my city. Confidence, passion, commitment, style, that's Queens for you. Custom gear is important to me because it just represents who you are. Me as a kid, I remember I used to always look up at all the big leaguers at the time and see what they would wear. You couldn't get that stuff, you know, in the stores. So now being able to customize basically everything I wear on the field and it's one on one, I think that's just something special. You know, I worked really hard to get here and we get to do some swag and put your own flavor onto the field and show people, you know, who you really are. Customs are one on one, just like me. G form, made for the moment. Hi, I'm four-time Gold Glove winner Charles Johnson, and you're watching PerfectGame.tv. He gets that one around, deep left center field, way out of here. Career home run number one for the man who is Prince, but will soon be king. Well, we all have favorite moments, and that was one of mine. The first home run in the big leagues for Prince Fielder, and he spends time with us now. Hey, hey Prince, congratulations on that PG Hall of Fame honor, that call that you got, building the very first class out. You were a PG alum certainly way back when, but what did it mean when you're joining a class of great alums of an organization that has springboarded a lot of guys into pro and college baseball? Oh, it means a lot. I mean, uh... When I first went to a showcase, you know, you, you don't expect this to ever happen, but I mean, it was a lot of fun and it's a lot of competition. So uh, to see, um, you know, to get that kind of competition that early on was very, uh, you know, motivated me because there's a lot of great players. So I think uh, to be inducted now, it uh, really feels good, man. I mean, uh, you know, how couldn't it? Let's go back to 01, Trop. That was 20 years ago. Time flies, man. We've been together on a couple of occasions, but, but 01 at the Trop, um, you touched on a little bit. Take it deeper. You were a very good high school player at the time. You understood the game kind of like mm. I did when I was young because our fathers both played. But mm. what was it like specifically when you looked around the field and saw everybody that was close to or as good as you? Oh, it was just, I'm not sure, man. It wasn't overwhelming. It was just like, man, you know, this is it's a real deal. You know what I mean? It's just uh, obviously, you know, it brought the best out of me because you knew you had to, you know, these guys are great. So, you know, you can't be going out there and, you know, not giving it your all. They're embarrassing. So, uh, just made me want to play harder and, you know, get real focused. We're all getting older, but what are you vivid, some of your vivid memories of high school baseball? Uh, I guess my freshman year, the um, state finals, we lost, you know, the last game. But, I mean, just being in uh, Tampa at the, you know, the Yankees uh, spring training thing was a lot of fun. After that, obviously, you know, my senior year when I got drafted, you know, so, uh, you know, I felt like LeBron James, I guess, in high school for whatever, you know, my, you know, my little area. So uh, it was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> your, your commitment was to ASU. Right. And obviously that's a long, long ways away from Florida. I think inquiring minds want to know, uh, how did ASU at least garner your attention? Uh -huh. um, certainly that was a great commit from them. And obviously everyone expected you to go pro. But why ASU at least in that commitment? Well, I mean, they were the uh, they were the first ones to kind of pay attention to me before, you know, before um, everybody else did. So I think I just, that meant a lot to me. You know, I think, uh, you know, obviously I did well in high school, but they were, they didn't, um, I felt like they, uh, to me, it seemed like they saw saw it before, it, you know, saw my talent before it started coming through. So, you know, that, uh, that made me feel good. And I guess, you know, I think that's why I chose them because they were there at the beginning. What were your minor league journeys like? I mean, you, 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 you homered in your first professional game uh, late in the game as a grand slam. You homered the, the day your son was born in the minor leagues. But those are big milestone moments. But what do you remember about coming from high school and immediately having the challenge of facing pros? Uh, I, think, I think just the everyday part of it. Um, you know, I was in, uh, in rookie ball, you know, it's only, what, 70 games or so? But you still, it's just every day. 
you know, it's not just practice Monday through Friday or, you know, Monday and then you have a game Tuesday. It's every day you practice and have a game. So at first it was like, man, we do a lot. But I mean, I think, you know, after a while you get used to it and realize that uh, you know, it's not a bad job to have. So, you know, I just made it fun, I guess. You did make it fun. And what I remember you as being one of your announcers when you got to the big leagues is you did play every day. Mm-hmm. You went what a, you went about an eight year span, dude, where you were about a 160 games a year. A, how'd you do it? And B, how much did it mean to you to do that? How important was it for you to post up every day? It was very important just because um, I didn't like when I didn't play. You know, I didn't feel, I just hate that feeling. I just didn't like the, you know, it's almost like a, felt like I left the iron on. You know what I mean? I just, I didn't like not playing. So if I was able to play, if I was healthy and, you know, it's my position to play, you know, I, I figured I'd rather be the one out there than just, you know, watching. Just, you know, just, I just didn't like it. If I didn't play, I'd be in the cage hitting off the tee or something the whole game. And it's like, I just, I couldn't sit still. So if it's my job to play, I'd rather play. Your son, Jaden, as we said, you know, time flies. You know, I know he's played well. He played well in the summer of 2021. PG has seen him since 2016. Had a great summer, near near 500 on base and about 50 plate appearances. Um, tell us a little bit about Jaden, where he's at in his journey. Uh, he's just getting better every day, man. You know, he's uh, having fun, you know, going to showcases, like you said, and uh, he's just enjoying it. So, um, you know, he's uh, really starting to uh, love the process of playing every day, you know, working out every day. So I'm just glad to see him. Uh, you know, it's not me saying, let's go to the cage anymore. Or, hey, you want to work out? It's him doing it. Once you see that, you know, and see how far he's, you know, how much he's pro- progressed, it's just a, it's a good sight to see. What's next for you? I mean, I know you have a lot of things going on. You made a good living playing this game. But yeah. when we don't always connect like we did in the past, I'm curious. Um, inquiring minds would love to know what's next for you. Uh, n- <laughs> nothing right now. Just, uh, you know, I mean, this is what, you know, right now, my, like you said, uh, my oldest is playing, my youngest is playing. So, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just dad right now, man. I'm just, uh, you know, dad and, you know, hang out with the wife. I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to do, uh, you know, as least as possible. So, uh, yeah, I'm just fine right now, but. Uh, I don't know. Who knows in the future? Something might come up. But right now, man, I'm not uh, I'm not in a rush to find anything. I'm just hanging out and being dead. What advice do you have for young athletes, 14, 15-year-old athletes, and maybe they're kind of in that PG watch list world already. They're top, you know, 100. <laughs> and uh, kind of like you were. I mean, you were <laughs> on that watch. Everyone was watching you for a variety of reasons. But let's say they're being watched, and they're 14, 15, 16. They're being watched a lot. What advice do you have for them? Uh, don't worry too much about that. Cause you know what I mean? Uh, just keep getting better every day and keep playing. I mean, if you, uh, you can't, if you hold your worth in the ranking or what people are saying or whatever, it's gonna, it's gonna be up and down, you know, cause sometimes you're not gonna always, you know, go three for four or four for four. And, or what if you drop down a spot or what if, you know what I mean? What if someone says they didn't like this? So you just got to work hard and play hard and, uh, you know, play for yourself and your teammates and just, do the best you can, but don't don't worry too much about the outside. You know what I mean? You got to feel good about what you're doing. And if you're doing that, man, you know, the results will come and everything else will work out for sure. And and, and same question, but for parents. It's advice you're giving yourself right now. It's, it, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's you evolving as a baseball dad. What advice do you have for parents? <sighs> uh, relax. You know what I mean? Some, <laughs> sometimes just relax, man. It's... uh. You know, everybody wants their child to do great, but, you know, big leagues and college and everything, that's going to come. But, I mean, so far away, you know, you're at a high school tournament. You know what I mean? So just relax and enjoy and just enjoy it. Like, obviously, motivate them and support them and push them, you know. But at the end of the day, man, it's you just got to relax. <laughs> that's all. It's got to relax. And are you, are you at all talking to yourself there or do you have that mastered? Uh, no, not as far as the games. Like, you know, obviously I push them, you know, get their workout and, you know, work out, be prepared. That's what I push. Be prepared. But in the games, man, you know, Hey, whatever happens, happens. And if we got to fix something, we'll fix it. But you, you know, you just got to relax. <laughs> Amazing, man. Congrats on this honor. I know, uh, it's unique. Obviously it's unique. Um, and, mm. uh, we're, we're proud of it. I had my time with you when you were just a young player and I was a young announcer. So congrats on this. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. On my Mount Rushmore of baseball players, one of the favorites that I ever covered. 
Prince Fielder loved having that conversation with him. When we come back, a young man who has inspired me as well in a very different way, out of Lake Charles, Louisiana, where tragic storms and then a very serious illness nearly stopped his career for good. He pushed through with both, helping out his community and obviously fighting through to become a Perfect Game All-American. We'll get to know Gavin Guidry when we return to Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rawlings. Perfect game. On and off the field, it's a way of life. And now, that same passion, your passion, is represented in the brand new exclusive PG Gear and Clothing line. Designed with you in mind, the looks that you live in, whether during a sweat-soaked workout or a round of BP. Make your memories in perfect game gear. Thoughtful, comfortable, perfect for you. Visit shop.perfectgame.org. Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rawlings, continues. There's just something about living in Louisiana, right? The heart, the character, the culture, the food, incredible, and the toughness. Look, last year, Lake Charles, Louisiana was devastated. This year, here we go again, Ida comes through and does damage and heads up north and does all kinds of damage. In other words, you've got to be tough to live in Louisiana, and there's some kind of character that goes into being a native. We got to know that about Gavin Guidry. He went through two devastating storms a summer ago as a resident. He got his shovel and he went and helped local businesses reopen. He did it with his friends. He understood how important it was. His house was spared, but a lot of his friends and families, not so lucky. At the same time, he had a very serious illness that he battled through. This is a tough kid headed to LSU. Let's get to know more of the story of Gavin Guidry. My name is Gavin Guidry and I'm from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Well, all the things that everyone hears about Louisiana, about Southern hospitality and all that stuff, is 100% true. If you've ever been to Louisiana, you know, it's just everyone loves each other. Everyone's there for each the other. The process of recovery for a Southern city, Lake Charles, hit by a string of natural disasters with volunteers stepping up to help as the city waits to hear about more federal aid. They hit the day that we were supposed to be going back to school, first day of school. And so it was after Corona, school got shut down for three months. Everyone's kind of looking forward to going to school. And then three days before school starts, they say, hey, category four hurricane coming through. Like, y'all need to go, y'all can't come to school. And we got, we, we evacuated to Texas with my family and we were stuck there for almost two months before we got to come back home. It sounds bad, it does it sound, I mean, but at the same time, everyone's alive. So, I mean, there's positives from it, you know. You went back and our community is a lot closer than it was before. Not that I wish, not that I'm happy the hurricane said, but there's a lot of stuff that comes from it that people don't realize it's a positive. I don't know, it's just a very strong community. Louisiana people are very, very strong-minded people and they love where they're from. We love where we're from. So at the end of Right before we went back out, right at the end of uh, like quarantine, I started getting sick and throwing up a lot. And then we ended up going to the doctor and going trying to figure out what it was called. What it was, it was called gastritis. It's like the, the lining of my stomach and my intestines and everything was like inflamed. So basically, if I'd eat anything, it would hurt my stomach and I'd throw it up. I was super, super sick, and I ended up losing up to th like I lost like 30 pounds in two months. I'd eaten breakfast and I threw up breakfast, so I don't have anything in my body. So I'm trying to hit and get a workout in. And after 15 swings, I'm just drained. It kind of made me scrappier and bring more energy to the table. And now that I have all my energy back, I feel like it kind of helped me as a player. On the field, like I'm always looking for mistakes that I can take advantage of. Because I had to find a way to, to win a different way because the power wasn't there. The like I, didn't, I just didn't have everything I used to have, so I had to find a different way to win and kind of help me with my game now. Now that I'm back to where I was strength-wise and power-wise, and I still have scrappiness, I have a different energy than I felt like I had before, so I think it helped me a lot. Anytime you get to see me play baseball, you're gonna see me having fun, smile on my face, whether I'm 0 for 4 or 4 for 4, it's fun. I get to play with the best guys in the nation day in and day out and get to compete against the best. First off, I would say just keep going because you're gonna get on the other side of it, no matter how bad you think it is. Um, another thing that always kind of helped me whenever I feel like I'm like try to feel sorry for myself when I have no reason to feel sorry for myself is that someone always has it worse off than you, no matter how bad off you are. 
and just you know kind of keep perspective of life of how, how blessed you are no matter what you have or what you don't have just enjoy what you do have at Barb High School, they do it right. Glenn Caccini, who for several years was the USA 18U national team, is about as passionate of a head coach as you will ever find at the high school level. And I mean ever, ever, ever. He gets it done, and my goodness, is he got the right guy in Gavin Guidry. He was on the mound as they won the state championship game again last year. Ended up number three in the national rankings as put together by Perfect Game. They would argue they could certainly be higher than those rankings. Loved getting to know Guidry, love his family, has a very, very bright future. Jay Johnson, head coach LSU, Gavin Guidry, player LSU. That sounds like a match made in heaven, or better said, Louisiana. When we continue, a passionate athlete, a little bit younger, who's been finding us over and over and sharing his passionate clips about baseball. This young man wants to share with you how I do what I do. Hashtag Hidwood. What does that mean? We'll explain when we come back. This is Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rawlings. Yeah. Hey. Uh. I'ma get right in my bag. Uh. Why you gonna try to get mad? Uh. I'ma zip zip right past. Uh. Drip drip all on my swag. Uh. Why you trying to size me up? Uh. You don't wanna try your luck. Another level. Another level. Another level. We ain't never settle now. Nah. Level up. Watch me level up. It started with a simple idea. To break what the game knows. To evolve the standard. It's time to revolutionize defense. Printed in 4D for a breakthrough in technology. Ultra lightweight, resilient, form fit. Game ready and protested. Designed for a revolution. Engineered for defense. The Rev One X. I'm Tom Flash Gordon, three-time All-Star and World Series champion. You're watching PerfectGame.tv. Perfect Game Weekly presented by Rawlings. It was about a year ago I came up with an idea and we all kind of took it together. If it works, we'll give everyone else credit. But if it doesn't work, I certainly will take the blame. It's called How I Do What I Do. We want athletes to share with us their growth in baseball. Hashtag Hidwid, H-I-D-W-I-D. -I -I well, we found a young man out of Mansfield, Texas. This talented athlete, A.J. Gill, Antonio A.J. Gill, he's just celebrating his 11th birthday, and he's the one who seized it. Look, A.J., you're the one who's going to save this idea single-handedly. He's been busting his tail, getting better. He had an incredible year, well over 500, working, working, working. How I do what I do. Antonio, A.J., Gil, the rest is up to you. By the way, that recent posting just two weeks ago, he had an incredible summer. He's been up to 70 miles an hour on the mound. And his team, the Arlington Twins, they're cranking. They're climbing right up the ranks. As a matter of fact, when you take a peek at the Yeti Travel Ball Rankings, his team in the number 21 spot at the 10U age group. By the way, best of luck in your 11U season, AJ. Let's take a look at the entire 10U rankings, 1 through 10, brought to you by our good friends with Yeti. You've got a couple of MVP teams that are going back-to-back, -back, one at the bottom, one at the top. Of course, MVP Hustle, the 10U Casillas team at the top. Love seeing Florida represented. That prime baseball is kind of a newer program, doing amazing things. Team Sosa, 305 out of Florida. It wouldn't be a ranking without an East Cobb program, and in Georgia as well, 643 DP, some kind of special. Texas, Georgia, Florida, California, the 10U rankings. All you other states, 
You're welcome to jump in at any time. We really love doing this show. It's a different kind of show on Perfect Game Weekly. We're glad that it's syndicated onto your television. By the way, if you can't find this show on your television, then find it on Perfect Game TV's app. You can download it on your smartphone. You can download it on your smart television. Or if you happen to be on a laptop or a PC, visit perfectgame.tv. Thank you, Flash Gordon. Thank you, Charles Johnson. Gavin Guidry, you are heroic for what you do. Best of luck as you head into your senior year of high school. And, of course, Prince Fielder. Just stop right there and smile on many, many Mount Rushmores as far as passion, driving the baseball, having fun. We hope this show's all about that for you, having fun around the game of baseball. This is the only show devoted to amateur baseball. This has been Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rawlings. We'll see you soon at the ballpark.